Good afternoon to the Saints of North Creek and the Saints well beyond. Uh, it's time again for our 10-minute uh, weekly Bible study. And uh, this will finish up the, uh, the first course. And the first course uh, was Discovering Our Identity. And we ran through uh, my values, my strengths, my desires, my self-image, my faith, and now today we're going to go through my tomorrows. What is it going to be like for me tomorrow? Uh, next Wednesday we begin on uh, the second uh, course of the studies as working through my hang-ups. And so uh, we can begin a new section. And if you go through these and, and see how the scriptures and the themes of the scriptures uh, are methodically placed, uh, so there's a method to the madness that we're up to, uh, go back and review those quickly and see where you have been and uh, where uh, the scriptures are taking us. We're on a journey of learning. So uh, we can always go back and review and then go on. So for today, um, we're going to go to the 14th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew. And we're going to begin at the uh, 22nd verse. Hear the word of the Lord. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat, and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountain, and he himself had to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because of the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why do you doubt? And when they climbed back into the boat, the wind died down. And then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, this, truly you are the Son of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that you'd open our hearts and our minds, that not only would we be hearers of your word, but that we would be doers of your word. How do you think you would have reacted, or I guess I have to ask we, how do you think we would react if we were in that boat with Jesus? I mean, I might look out and say, this can't be happening. You know, uh, walking on the water, uh, really, and uh we might think this, we're seeing things, uh, well, we're tired, whatever. Would we be afraid? I don't know if we would be afraid or not. And then we're recognizing it was Jesus. Uh, how would that draw our thoughts? We think, why was he doing this? Um, is he coming to rescue us? Is he coming to impress upon us how wonderful he is? What's the story here? Well, they didn't have all that time to think that we've had for all the years we've had this scripture. What I think is going on is that Jesus saw the disciples in distress and trouble. He wanted them to know that no matter what storm, no matter on what sea, no matter how far they might think they are away from him, that he's always just right there in an answer and a whisper of a prayer, that he would be there to help because he cared. But it goes beyond that. You know, he had proven to them that he could heal. They've seen that. They saw him perform miracles. But what about this time? This was different. This was the storm. This was the wind. This was the sea. This was nature itself. Surely only the God who has created nature could possibly control the nature. And, that, and this comes to a point of saying, Jesus is putting down the, the, the power of the truth that Jesus was and is truly God. And at this point, he was truly God and truly human. And so that's, that's a great lesson 
for us. It's, it's again, seals the promise of God that I will be with you. I will walk with you. I will feel the things that you are feeling. I'll be there in your fears, and I'll be there whenever it is time to rejoice with you. And then Peter said, I'll come out there on the water with you. And Jesus said, come on, come on, big boy, show me what you got. And Peter did pretty good. I mean, come on, nobody else got out of the boat. And, um, you know, you recognize if we're going to take a risk here, uh, if you're going to walk on water, you've got to get yourself wet, even if you're walking on it. But he began to sink because he did become even more frightened. And we can't blame Peter for that. Makes us think about our own walk, doesn't it? I mean, tomorrow, if we're asked to do something that is some great risk, will we be up to that task? And think about what is the greatest risk that you have ever taken? Was it a risk uh, to take a, a job that you didn't know if you really had the training for? Was it a risk to make a move somewhere? To go where you had to start all over again and you weren't sure if you'd have the finances, you had all that. Was it a risk that you would have to take a certain cure for a certain disease? Was it a risk uh, to let your children grow up and try to be on their own? There's all kinds of things. Was it a risk to do some kind of uh, ministry or mission or something for Jesus Christ? To take a risk of looking like a fool, to take a risk of being taken uh, advantage of a risk that someone might hurt you. you know, there's all kinds of risks that we can take. And, and the one thing I've come to believe is absolutely true. Uh, if we don't reach for the stars, we'll probably never land on the moon. But if we shoot for the stars, even if we fall short, we're bound to land on the moon. We're bound to make some great progress. So what I'd like you to be, be thinking about and asking those questions of, what are the things, the greatest risks that I've ever taken? How did that turn out for me? And did I trust God in those things? Uh, what am I willing to do if Jesus asked me to get out? And could I come and walk on the water with him? Would I be willing to risk the very things that Jesus was risking? Do I recognize that I have can put my total trust, my all hope in God because I've seen God walk on water? I don't know. It, that's, those are the questions we have uh, to ask ourselves. And then if you would, go on to uh, myownsong.org. Let me some of your thoughts. I'd like to see what you feel about this scripture. Surely I don't have a corner on theology, that's for sure. These are just some of my thoughts. So we could put those thoughts together, how much more we can learn. In fact, I think I might post even a few uh, questions for... Uh, for you to think about, um, maybe uh, thought starters. Uh, I don't expect you to answer them, but I'll just put a few on there maybe and uh, see what you think. At any rate, uh, I think this is a good lesson. I, uh, I think I would uh, like to go out there and walk in that water with Jesus. Because you know what? I know at the point I began to sink that his hands would be out there to steady me and pull me up. And on that thought, I'll say, you know what? Amen.